Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm here today going to finish up this hinge deal. I guess this will be the episode of how he did that. So, give you another look here at the hinge. No opening, no seam lines. Uh, kind of a rough finish in here. So, gives away uh, that these are cast. So, how they would do that is in two parts. They would cast this side, which has got the two central airs, and they would drill a hole through them slide the pin into it then uh, they would put it back into a mold and pour this other leaf and it would pour around the pin and then by the shrinkage of the cast as it cooled that would seize it to the pin so the pin is actually solid in these three parts but it can still turn in this part because that was what was machined before they put it together and that's that's what allows this hinge to work that's why this side is so loose and this side is rigid you can kind of tell that the pin is you know there's no movement in this side because the pin is locked in it so all the movement is in here the pin is fixed basically because it's shrunk into this part when it was cast so what that means is there's no way to take these apart. So we're back down to doing what I was originally going to do and come in here from the end mill and get this pin out of here, uh, rebore them, put an oversized pin in it, and plug weld the end back up, and nobody will ever be able to tell that uh, these have been fixed. Uh, what I will say. Uh, also, there's a radius ground in here. They had stones made with this radius. So when they were making this male half that's got all the machine work done, they would grind that radius into it so that when they poured this cast, it would fit nice and tight like that where there's no gap because it's poured to match. And that's why these sides are not perfectly round because you can kind of make out a little bit the uh, part line of the casting in here, especially on this one. And you can see that part line there. Uh, other thing I've determined is that when I poured this, it wasn't actually together like this because it doesn't line up just exactly right. Uh, If you look here, there's a little spot where there was like a piece of sand or something in the casting and it's not perfect. So actually when they poured this, uh, it was at this much of an angle. And I'm thinking actually that they were poured uh, maybe even vertical like this. So they could put this piece into a block, lay another piece in here, and then pour this side. So this be your, your start of the pour in the bottom and fill out this way. And then that way your anything that's got to be ground off or slag and all impurities are all out here at the end where it doesn't matter and they can just grind that off. And I'm certain that these are saw marks from a, either a hacksaw, a, probably a steam powered hacksaw. I don't know when bandsaws were first really invented but I'm gonna say that what they actually did is probably made these like a big piano hinge and they would maybe pour six or eight feet at a time and uh, then come back and saw them apart and that would make a lot less waste uh, by not having to trim each individual casting uh, you would just have a little waste on each end and all of them in between would all be completed units. And I think that was one of the reasons why they used this hole pattern being symmetric because then they could do a whole length of these and they would know where the centers of the hinges were by the casting marks 
that are on all these so they knew where to cut them apart so the guys would, would put the hinges in and you know, put the pins in each place where they belong down through there and then pour that and get that done. Now maybe they did them individual but I'm going to say probably uh, since they did a whole lot of these I read that they were making fifteen thousand dollars worth of hinges uh, a year and fifteen thousand dollars in eighteen thirty something was a whole lot of money so they were making boatloads of these hinges so I'm sure that they were doing it the the best way they could mass produce these and I'm gonna say that individual was not that method so I'm gonna say they did these like I said in a big long piano hinge and then cut them in the segments so that's how they did that now let's get them fixed okay show you how I'm doing these here uh, I've got a good straight edge on this side and this side, of course, it all, all lines up because that's where they sawed it apart. So all I'm doing is just taking, putting them in the vise on top of a parallel there because these are tapered so uh, they won't sit exact down in there good. And I find that if I get out here towards the end, I get a better alignment up here on the top. There we are, and they're good. We got decent barrel alignment. Okay, so here's where we're at. Got the hinge apart. And see that part's not quite round. That was the wear that was in that. 
where the pin came out. And this was the side that would have been cast around the pin. Now we've got holes through the end there. That's how it fits together. Piece of quarter inch rod I clipped off. So, got rid of all the play. So, I got a good tight hinge. So, I'm just taking, grind the ends there, and uh, take weld or weld them back over, and uh, grind them flat. And we ought to have a re rebuilt hinge. Good to go. Okay, so here we are. One repaired hinge. No play whatsoever. Moves nice and free. And a uh, little paint on there, and nobody will ever be able to tell that he's even been worked on. So. See if they're good for another hundred years anyway. May I, and if I live that long, I'll, uh, and there's still a YouTube around, maybe I'll, I'll put up a video and we'll see how they're holding up. So, thanks for watching. The mystery solved and hinges repaired. Hinges back on. And that it latches just like it's supposed to. We're good to go. So I'll give you all a shot of what these were doing. This uh, room's got 12 foot ceilings in it, so give you an idea of the size.